Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling General Linear Models Design of Experiments. And in this video, we're going to look at the least squares estimator of beta, the beta parameter. And as a reminder, the model is y equals x beta plus epsilon, where the mean of epsilon is zero, constant variance sigma squared, covariances are zero. And x, we're going to let be dimension n times p. So we have a sample size of n, and we have p beta parameters. Now, theorem one, beta tilde is the least squares estimator of beta if and only if this relationship holds. x beta tilde is equal to m times y, where m is this. And that's from the previous videos. It's the perpendicular projection matrix onto the column space of x. So now let's prove it. So let's let x, let's let beta tilde be an arbitrary estimate for beta. Now consider this here. So y minus beta, right? So if we take this over, so y minus beta is the epsilon or the error terms. So this is the sum of uh, squared errors, what this represents. And what we do is we change beta tilde, we move it around calculate this, move it around, calculate it, and we, f and we keep doing that until we find the beta tilde, beta tilde that produces the absolute minimum sum of squared errors. And, th and that's the squares estimator. But let's look at some of the properties of this. Let's do some algebra and revisit this concept of changing the beta tilde parameter, you know, tweaking it until we find the one that makes this absolute minimum. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add zero here, and we're going to add zero into this parenthesis. And that's what we do here. So we uh, my minus my, you know, in this first piece here. And then we have my minus my in this second piece. Now let's foil this. This times this is this piece. And then this times that is this piece. And then this times this plus this times this, it equals this. It's two times this because, you know, this is a vector and this is a vector, so it produces a number. So the transpose is actually the same as the original. So you can transpose one of those products and you get the same thing. You just get two of them. Now, let's look at this cross product piece right here. Let's call it star. And um, so this, this piece here we bring straight down. Now here, we left factor out a y, and then we distribute the transpose, and we, get, and we get this piece here. But i minus m is symmetric, and that's by property m2, which was in the second video. And i minus m was the perpendicular projection matrix onto the orthogonal complement of the comp space of x. Since it's a perpendicular projection matrix, it has to be symmetric and idempotent. So from that aspect alone, we know that this is symmetric. Now let's take this piece, multiply it to here, and then this piece, multiply it in. And that's what we get here. Now, by property M9, this is 0. So that whole thing drops out. And x times this is 0. So that drops out. And that's by property M6. But what I'm going to harp in this series is not just memorizing formulas, but understanding the geometry and uh, intuitively what's going on, right? So M is the perpendicular projection matrix onto the column space of X, and I minus M is the perpendicular projection matrix onto the orthogonal complement of the column space of X. So this product has to be zero because you, you can't project one into the other when they, you know, M lives in X and this lives in the orthogonal complement. So the only vector that makes that possible is zero. And the same way here, this I minus M takes, when you pre-multiply it by any vector, puts it in the orthogonal complement space of X. But X lies, is already in the comp space of X. So the only way possible would be if, the, if that was a zero vector. So that's why that's zero. Okay, so now that side note, we just showed that this is zero. So we bring these two pieces down and we get this. So it's literally the same. Now let's observe this. This is a constant, right? 
In, in the original, we're changing up the beta tilde. Everything else stays the same. So there's no beta tilde here, so this is constant. So it doesn't really even play a part if we're going to try to minimize that quantity. But over here, there is a beta tilde. So this gets smaller and bigger depending upon what beta tilde we have. But notice that this is the same as this. So when you take that vector product, it's the sum of squared things. So this piece here has to be non-negative. It's zero or positive, non-negative. And, and, and for whatever value we pick for beta tilde, it's non-negative. So it, it changes as beta tilde changes. So how can we minimize this? Really, it's just minimizing this. But what's the smallest this can be? Zero. Well, how can it be zero? Well, if my is equal to x beta tilde, then this is zero, and it's 100% minimized. So thus, the original least squares, you know, the sum of squared errors, is minimized by taking y, my equal to x beta. And so the beta tilde that, that makes this equation happen is the least squares estimate for beta. Okay, But that leads us to theorem 2. Beta tilde defined like this, x transpose x generalized inverse, x transpose y, is a least squares estimate for beta. And it's a, sort of an easy proof since if we pre-multiply x times beta tilde, we get this, right? Because that's the x. And then if we define beta tilde like this, we get this. But this piece here is how we defined m. So it's my. And so that those do equal. And by theorem 1, beta tilde has to be a least squares estimate for beta. Now, one or two notes that beta tilde, the least squares estimates define like this. And the generalized inverse is not unique. Usually if you can find one, then there's an infinite number. And so there's an infinite number of possible least squares estimates. And they all produce the same smallest squared errors, sum of squared errors. So it's not unique. And that's true when the rank of x is less than p. Now, we did a series called General Linear Models Multiple Regression, or maybe it's just called Regression. And there we were dealing with the design matrix that was full column rank. And so it always produced a unique least squares estimate for beta. And that was defined this way. And that's because the inverse of this full rank matrix, x transpose x, is unique. So it produces a unique estimate. Um, now, let's do a quick example illustrating why this is not necessarily unique. Now, in a previous video called Projection Matrix on the Column Space of X example, we used this example. So, we, it was an effects model where we had two groups and two observations within each group. And then in vector form, it could be written like this, where Y, the design matrix, beta, and the error term. Okay. In this example, we showed that both G1 and G2 are generalized inverses for X transpose X. Okay? And what that means is if you take this times this matrix times this matrix, you get it back. And the same way for this one. If we take this times this times this, you get this one back. So these are both, and we confirmed it in the previous video, are generalized inverses of x transpose x. So that means that beta 1 tilde, where we use g1 for the generalized inverse, is a least squares estimate. And beta 2, where we use g2 in in, in for the generalized inverse of x transpose x, is also a least squares estimate for beta. They're both least squares estimates. Now, if we do the simple math on these, so if we look at this and we plug in this one here, and x we know, right? X is this, and we just generically call it, you know, um, you know, y11, y2, y12, y21, y22, put it here. We can solve this and we get this. 
it's zero in the first component. Y, y1 dot bar, which is the mean for group one, and then we have the mean for group two. So that's the least squares estimate for beta. Now we can also solve beta two tilde, and we get this, where where we you know it's multiples of the group means. Well, the numbers that we get in each component here are absolutely different than the than the values we get in each component for beta two hat. Okay, but one note is if we pre multiply both of these by x, so x beta one tilde. That's equal to x beta 2 tilde, and they are all equal to this quantity here, which the uh, mean, group 1 mean, group 1 mean, group 2 mean, group 2 mean. Um, so we do get a unique estimate when we pre-multiply by x. And But this is the fitted model, and it makes sense, right? Because if we look at the y's, this observations from group 1, so what are we going to estimate it with? I don't know, group 1 mean. This observation is from group 1. We estimate it with the group 1 mean. These next two are from group 2, so we estimate each of those with the group 2 mean. So as a model, it, it makes sense you know, that that's the fitted model. But that's pretty concerning to me, because what if we wanted to estimate, come up with an estimate for mu, the overall grand mean? Do we use 0? Or do we use this? I mean, and there's an infinite number of least squares estimates. So which one do we use as an estimate of mu? I, I don't know. Well, this is a perfect segue why estimability is a huge topic. Because the least squares estimates aren't unique. So individual beta parameters are not estimable. Okay? So estimability of beta parameters are not possible. I mean, we, you know, meaning they're, it's not unique. However, certain linear combinations of the beta parameters, you know, call it uh, lambda, you know, prime beta. Um, so this is a, a, a vector in, of, that produces linear combinations of our beta parameters. This can be estimable. And that's the big 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 topic of estimability and so the next few videos will be on this topic and I'm gonna say three to five videos will be on estimability because of how important it is in design of experiments well, I hope you enjoyed this I sure did please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one thanks bye